Austin, why are you uh, such a big Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros fan? Well, I think they really just sort of speak to me. Um, I think they speak to a lot of people, but their the music is so accessible, and it's all these really personal messages that you know come from their experience and their lives. That uh, it's just just all around really you know meaningful music that you know is powerful. How long have you been a fan? Um, at first, someone sent me this song home to listen to in fall of 2010, and uh, I just had it on repeat the whole week that I was listening to it and I looked online to get their album and saw that they were playing in New Orleans where you know where close to where I live that weekend so I went to the show only knowing that song and just left the show in love with the band just you know more so than I ever really experienced maybe from anyone else and you said earlier that you'd been uh, to eight concerts or last night was last your night ninth was eighth. Or last, last night was the eighth yeah okay. so after this weekend it'll be about 12 I think what was that first concert like Oh, it was incredible. It was at the Howlin' Wolf in New Orleans, which is like an 800, 800 person venue. It's all standing, but um, it was just so dynamic because they played Omnash You Made twice. You know, the first time they played it, the crowd didn't really get super into it, but then they closed with it and just everyone was just rocking around. The whole crowd just like moving as one. Um, Alex came out into the crowd and sang like three of the songs just in the crowd. And, uh, and when we went back on stage, he was barefoot, and so his feet had gotten cut up by glass. And he's like, man, my feet are really cut up. Like, does he have a Band-Aid? And the whole crowd, it's like all of a sudden there's just boxes of Band-Aids being passed to the stage. It's like, who comes to a ball with Band-Aids? But it was just like, everyone was just so on level with what was going on that, you know, people had Band-Aids for him. Uh, and then at one point, Stewart started playing the Saints Go Marching In and just had an awesome, like, second line, you know, trumpet line. And the crowd just loved it because we were all from New Orleans. And, uh... And then when he played Brother, he had everyone in the bar sit down Indian style. Like 800 people sitting down while he sang Brother, you know, like we're all around a campfire. It's so incredible. It was amazing. Which which show has been your most memorable? Um, that one is that one's up there, but I just saw them recently in Austin, Texas at Stubbs, and that was just a fantastic venue and, and the, the set list was just, you know, more more than anything I could ask for. They played Desert Song, it was the first time I'd heard that live and they played Brother again, and uh, it's just really great energy, and the whole crowd was into it, and, and yeah, the Desert Song Live was incredible. So when the band announced that they were putting on Big Top, uh, you had to be here, right? Was yeah. there any, any question? I bought tickets the first day they came out to every single day. It's like, yeah, I bought tickets for this way before I even looked at flight information or my class schedule. <laughs> it was just like not even a question. You know, I'd seen videos of Old Big Tunnels you know, in England, and uh, yeah, watching those videos, I've always just been like, man, that, that must have been just amazing. So yeah, it was no question to come here. What was your expectations of this event? And uh, what did you think about uh, the first day? I mean, the first day was amazing. I, I sort of had to rush here off the plane, so I didn't get to see a lot of what was going on outside. But uh, just right off the bat, you know, the, the rotating stage and the just the 360 degree like experience, the crowd being wrapped around them. And like, that was all just such a great dynamic that uh, I'm really excited to explore more today, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been fun so far. Um, I, love, I love the idea too, because I've, I've been to a lot of festivals, a lot of concerts for a bunch of different bands, and I'm, I've never really seen anything like this at all. You know, it's really original and fun. What, uh, what makes this band so unique? I guess part of it stems from their relationships with each other, because you know, a lot of bands, you know, they have working relationships that's very professional-like, and of course they, you know, they have to get along, in most cases, to survive as a band. But in this group, it really goes beyond that. I feel like it's you know, they're they all are putting very personal part of themselves into the music and into the group. That uh, you know, it's not they're not just a band and it's not just band members. They're all friends. You know, the fact that there are artists that are going to be opening for them that were recently in the band, like Aaron Embry, you know, that are coming back and are still you know in these positive relationships with the band even after they've left the band or are no longer you know, directly involved with it. You know, I guess it, it all really stems from that. Just the pos the positive attitude and atmosphere surrounding them that you know it's just it's reflected by the crowds and by everything and everyone who you know listens to them so yeah like one time I or when I saw them in Dallas uh, it's sort of just a testament to the sort of people who go and see the shows um, I was up at the front but my friend had been late for the show and so I had his ticket and I went and brought it to him after I'd been waiting at the front the show was about to start and uh, I just told the crowd around me like I'm gonna go bring my friend his ticket I'll be right back and but left the the front and got back into the front, you know, without any problems. And at any sort of festival or concert of anyone else, that would just be impossible. I mean, but everyone's just super nice, and uh, yeah, it's just everywhere I see them, it's the same thing. Everyone's just you know there to see the band, and you know everyone's on the same level and it's really friendly.
Is there any song in particular you want to hear tonight or this weekend? Oh uh, man, I I would say that one of my favorite songs live that I've seen them is, do is Omnashime, and so it'd be amazing to see that again. But uh, yeah, I'd be really excited to sort of hear some songs that you know they maybe not even only learned for this, but just things that you don't really hear often. You know, some B sides or something. Um, I emailed them when they put out the call for to send song requests to community music. And uh, I, I asked if they would play uh, Helping the Retarded to Find God, which is something they did with the Fleming Lips. And uh, that would be very exciting. Do <laughs> you, uh, you have any uh, stories you want to tell? Or? Oh, gosh. Story time. <laughs> um, I guess one of, one, of, one of the happiest moments was uh, seeing them was when I was at Beale Street Music Fest this past May. And it was the first like really personal connection I'd had with any of the members. But I, I threw my gold jacket to Alex on stage um, you know, in, in this crowd of tens of thousands of people, and he put it on for home, and it was the last song they played. And then, you know, I I assumed the second I was throwing it up there that I was like, I'm not getting my jacket back because you know, I mean, this huge crowd, you know. But he like just gave me this really direct look when he when he caught it, and he threw it back to me. You know, it was like he looked like at my face and threw it back, and I was like, wow, you know, I just felt like this super you know personal connection, and so that was just really incredible that you know. Not only he took the effort to make sure that I got it back, but just that, you know, that it all just was, I don't know, it was, it was just really special to me. <laughs> so, that, the, the, I have a picture of him wearing it on stage, and that'll probably be my profile picture to the day I die. <laughs> Life is it, it's where it's at, it's getting skinny, getting fat, it's falling deep into a love, it's getting crushed just like a bug. Like there's no love, it's getting beat into the ground. It's getting lost and getting found. It's growing up and getting round. It's feeling sadness, or feeling silence, feeling sound. It's getting lonely, getting full. It's getting oh so beautiful. Yeah. I like that part. <laughs>